So, hi, my name is Alan Clues. I'm the Toronto Hypnotherapist, and I'm with a group of people right now, and we're going to do a group hypnosis session. So, I would like you to all begin by just making sure that your body is in a comfortable position. Making sure that your arms and your legs, your hands, and your feet are in a comfortable position. And perhaps you can become aware of your head resting on your neck, aware of your neck resting on your shoulders, your rib cage, your breastbone, your shoulder blades, resting on your spine, resting on your pelvis, resting on your sitting bones. And I would like you to take a moment and just breathe in to the top of your head. And then as you breathe out, following your own natural rate of breathing, just send a warm and gentle wave of relaxation all the way down your body, breathing in to the top of your head, and then breathing out down your whole body as you breathe out, relaxing it. Do this a few more times, breathing into the top of your head and just relaxing your body all the way down to the bottom of your feet as you breathe out. And then I would like you to bring your attention to your breathing, to pay attention to the sensation of air as it flows in through your nose, nasal cavity, back of mouth, down past your vocal cords into your lungs. Become mindful of the sensation of air flowing in and back out. And then become mindful of the movement of the various muscles involved. Your diaphragm, your abdomen, the muscles between your ribs, Mindful of the sensation of air flowing in and out, mindful of the expansion and contraction of the various muscles involved. And I would like you to take just a few deep diaphragmic breaths, breathing down into your diaphragmic cavity, causing your lungs to open and fill with good clean air, and then gently exhaling taking some nice, deep, diaphragmic breaths, relaxing breaths. And then I would like you to become aware of your forehead and allow your forehead to relax. And the way we relax muscles is we do nothing but let go. So do nothing but let go in your eyebrows, in your eyes, relaxing your eyes as deeply as you can. Relaxing the muscle deep in the center of your nose. Relaxing the tiny nostril dilator muscles. Relaxing the two muscles between the bottom of your nose and your upper lip, especially the second, deeper one that flattens against your teeth as it relaxes. And then moving down into the circular lip muscle, relaxing the top, sides, and bottom of your lips. Down into your chin, relaxing your chin deeper and deeper. And then return your awareness to your eyes. And this time, I would like you to relax your eyes as if they can go ten times deeper. Relaxing the muscles that are connected to the top of your eyes that flow up over your eyes into the eye socket and connect to the bone at the back. Relaxing those muscles ten times deeper. And then relaxing the muscle connected to the bottom of your eyes that flows underneath your eyes into the eye socket and connects to the bone at the back. Relaxing those muscles ten times deeper. Now the top and bottom muscles that help you look up and down are a twin pair of muscles. So just relax both of them. Do nothing but let go. 
and then become aware of the twin pair of muscles on the right and left sides of your eyes and relax those muscles as deeply as you can. Just relaxing all four of these muscles, the top and bottom, the right and left side muscles as deeply as you can. And finally, find the eyelid lifter muscle that flows from your eyelid up over your eyeball into the eye socket connecting to the bone at the back. And just relax that muscle as deeply as you can. Relaxing your eyes ten times deeper. And then allow this relaxation to seep down into your cheekbones, down into your cheeks, down into your jaw. And just relax the whole of your jaw. Or more correctly, the muscles connected to your jaw. The masticator muscles that flow from the temple bone down to the jaw bone just relax your whole face and then allow this relaxation to seep down into your throat your neck your shoulders down into your upper arms elbows lower arms hands and fingers and allow it to seep down into your chest your midriff your solar plexus your abdomen down into your pelvis and then let it seep down your shoulders, into your shoulder blades, your upper back, your middle back, your lower back, down into your hips and buttocks, down into your upper legs, knees, lower legs, down into your feet, the top and bottom of your feet, your toes and heels, just relaxing your body as deeply as you can just allowing your body to relax deeper and deeper with every natural breath that you take. Now I would like you to find yourself in the school room of the mind using your full sensory imagination. Step into the hypnagogic state and imagine being in somewhat of an old fashioned school room with wooden floors and a slate blackboard and perhaps wooden desks and maybe a window overlooking a lawn with trees in the distance. Sensing your body, sensing the effect of gravity on your body, sensing your feet pressing down against the wooden floor. And then turn and walk towards the blackboard as mindfully as you can. Noticing how you land with your heel and push off with the ball and toes. Aware of how your legs swing like pendulums around your hips. Aware of the movement of your toe joints, your ankle joints, your knee joints, your hip joints. And come to a stop in front of the blackboard. And notice that there's a magical piece of gold and chalk on a wooden ledge just below the blackboard and I would like you to use your sensory imagination and imagine reaching out and picking up this magical piece of chalk magical because it's not gold like the metal gold it's golden like sunlight and illumination like the special quality of light that comes from the Sun rising in the morning pushing away the darkness, heralding a new day. So become aware of that unique touch, texture of chalk in your hand. And in a moment, when I count from 10 down to one, I would like you to draw these numbers and large numerals on the board, really striving, not just to sense the movement of your arm and see the color, but also to hear that sound that chalk makes when it's dragged along the board and to smell the faint trace of chalk dust in the air. This ability to hear the chalk and smell the chalk are indications of a deepening trance. So as I say the number 10, imagine lifting your arm up, pressing the tip of the chalk against the board, 
dragging the chalk along the board. Imagine hearing the sound that chalk makes, aware of the faint trace of chalk dust in the air, the color of sunlight and illumination, like the dawning rays of the sun in the early morning, heralding a new day, a new dawn, a new beginning. And then trace a nine on the board, Aware of the movement of your wrist, elbow and shoulder joint, that pressure in your hand, the sound, the smell. And then trace an eight, sensing your feet pressing down against the floor, the arm, your arm moving, the sound, the smell. Tracing a seven. followed by a six, tracing a five, the movement of your arm, the pressure in your hand, the sound, the smell, your feet pressing down against the floor, a four, tracing a four, and wondering, and letting go a little deeper, and then tracing a three, Tracing a two and finishing by tracing a one. And then just allow your body to relax a little deeper, allow your attention to rest. And complex phrases and linguistic patterns can also be used to overwhelm the conscious mind so that the conscious mind is unable to reject the suggestion, to just relax a little deeper into a state of comfort is so important where your body can let go a little deeper as you listen to the sound of these words can be used in many different ways to just relax the muscles in your forehead to relax your eyebrows, to relax your eyes, your nose, your lips, your chin, your cheeks, your jaw, your face towards that comfortable awareness and just allow that linguistic processing unit in your brain to let go a little deeper as you focus on certain things can change in the most wonderful ways to just move deeper and deeper into a nice state of comfort it is so important the ability to let go even deeper to experience that profound state of tranquility is an interesting words can be used in many different ways to allow the conscious mind to just give up so that the, the subconscious mind comes to the forefront, just focusing on relaxing a little deeper and moving in to that state of comfort can be felt on the face, can just relax yourself into a deep state between here and there, or maybe between time and timelessness, and just allowing yourself to drift into a state of deep internal receptivity is a very interesting words can be used in so many different ways to just let go even deeper inside and I would like you to imagine that you are around some friends Perhaps it was a real event that happened, or maybe it's one that you imagine. But I would like you to imagine that you are with a group of friends and you see one of them get upset. You see the look on their face change, their muscles change, their posture, their body. You observe how getting upset changes their physiology. 
Imagine seeing them get upset and seeing that reflected in the micro expressions of their face, in the way they hold their arms, in the way that they hold their head and their body. And then move to another situation, perhaps imagined or real. Perhaps recall a time you saw another friend get upset, get angry, get mad, get frustrated, get anxious, get fearful. It doesn't really matter. Notice how their body changes. Notice how this emotion, this dark emotion, is reflected in their posture, the tone of voice, the muscles in their face, the way they hold their body. And then allow that to dissolve and imagine another situation. One you could imagine or perhaps one you've seen maybe today or yesterday or last week of someone getting upset. Observe them. Look at the way their voice changes, their breathing changes. Notice how this emotion takes over. Notice how they become this emotion. And it's reflected in their <laughs> eyes and the muscles in their face and in their body in many different ways. And then allow your attention to rest. And in a moment I'm going to ask you to recall a moment when you got very upset, when you lost it, perhaps got angry or frustrated or anxious or fearful, whatever, depressed, despairing. But before we do that, I'm going to count from 10 down to 1, and I would like you to relax a little deeper. 10, just letting go a little deeper. 9, just relaxing your body a little more. 8, just letting go of all of the muscles in your body. Seven, relaxing your forehead, your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth, your cheeks, your jaw. Six, just relaxing deeper and deeper. Five, letting go a little more. Four, perhaps even allowing your subconscious mind to summon the memory of a time you, yourself, got upset. Maybe it was today, yesterday, last week. Two, one. And summon this memory. Observe yourself from the inside. You've seen how your friends breathing change, the muscles in their face, their voice, their posture, the many different ways you observe this in them and observe these changes now within yourself. Observe the tone of your voice, if you used your voice, the muscles in your face, the way you held your shoulders, if you tensed up at all, and realize that all of these are forms of expression. Expression is more than the words that come out of our mouth. It's the expression on our face, the way we hold our body, the way we breathe. And so recall this moment as fully as you can. Recall how this feeling, this negative feeling manifested inside your body. Become aware of it from the inside. Observe it. Be the observer. Observing your body reacting in this way. Perhaps your voice took on a different tone. The muscles in your face. The way you held your arms and moved. And try to imagine not expressing this feeling. Try to imagine a situation similar, where it's a similar set of circumstances, but rather 
then expressing this emotion through your words, your tonality, through your body language, through your breathing, through the way you hold your body. Imagine just becoming aware of the impulse of this emotion and then not expressing it, not allowing it to manifest in your body. Becoming aware before it takes over your body. And I would like you to imagine perhaps tomorrow or the next day or maybe even next week some situation where you normally get upset. Perhaps it's rush hour traffic, stop and go. Perhaps it's a crowded subway or a bus, or perhaps it's triggered by the weather, by rain or by cold, or perhaps interpersonal relationships. There's always a simmering tension between you and someone else. And I want you to imagine being in that circumstance, the traffic, the subway, with that other person, and just noticing the hint of a trigger within you and then stopping the expression of it, not allowing this emotion to bubble over, to boil over like water boiling over a pot on a stove, not allowing this feeling to boil over into your voice, into your words into the expression on your face, into the way you hold your body. Just imagine being the observer, observing this little hint of a feeling and then not expressing it. Just allowing it to pass, keeping your body, your posture, your breathing the same. And then imagine another situation, another place where you often experience negative emotions, maybe standing in a line, maybe having to talk to your boss or confront an employee, or maybe dealing with a member of your family or whatever. Imagine yourself in another situation and something outside of you triggers that feeling, but rather than expressing it, you just allow it to dissipate and you do not express it in the muscles of your face, in your voice, in your words. You just allow yourself to become the witness, witnessing that event that triggered that infinitesimal feeling that you then were able to control. Bring this control deep inside you. Try to imagine another situation, perhaps stuck in traffic or in a crowd or someone frowning and looking at you in a way you don't feel comfortable being looked at. And imagine being the witness, witnessing your body witnessing this momentary brief, just almost infinitesimal feeling and stopping it, not allowing it to flow through your body, not allowing it to take over your body, not allowing it to be expressed in your voice, in your words, in your facial mannerisms, just being the witness, witnessing yourself. Imagine that control moving deeper and deeper within. Imagine being the witness, witnessing your body, witnessing your body breathing, witnessing the muscles in your face, your eyes, the tone of your voice, your expressions. And imagine another situation that would have triggered you. See what you would have seen, what you will see, what you would have heard, what you will hear. 
Become aware of your body. Become aware of that situation. Rehearsing this in the hypnagogic state. Rehearsing this in your mind. And see the trigger. It's a raised voice or someone looking at you wrong or a red traffic light or a lineup. And become the witness, witnessing your body. Become the observer, observing your body. Become the witness, witnessing this feeling. Just flicker. And then you stop it. And allow the control to move from the surface, from that person's voice, from the traffic jam, from the red light, from the lineup. Allow the control, take it back, hold that control within you. Do not be a victim of circumstance. Do not be a machine whose buttons can be pressed. And then allow your attention to rest. And just slowly, in your own way, just begin to return to normal waking awareness, just slowly returning to normal waking awareness, but striving in the future to be the witness, witnessing yourself, controlling yourself, stopping the expression of these feelings from erupting into the surface of your being. And I'm going to count from one up to five and slowly begin returning. One. Coming back more and more. Two. Coming back. Three. Moving your fingers and toes ever so slightly. Four. Perhaps stretching your body. And five. Returning to normal waking awareness coming back 